scaffolding. The cells of the goat will migrate into the scaffold, but it won't be as fast as if the, the cells are readily in the, the graft initially, and you'll be lax, having laxity and inflammation. So that leads to, yes, you'll have like um, Sharpie's fibers formation will happen in the acellular graft as well as in the cellularized graft. But um, let's say that the results are less uh, interesting without cells for the time being, because that will depend on the type of scaffold you graft also. Uh, nervous fibers are there, nervous endings are there in the graft, like in the native tissue. And if you check for the gain of strength of these grafts in vivo, you see that before, uh, f you know, at six months, at three months, the, the, the strength of these grafts are not considered very high. But if you go at, at let's say, 10 months and more, what impressed us is that we could reach up to 40% of the strength of a native ACL. And when the surgeons compared our BACL made in vitro with the central part of the patellar tendon, the conventional sort of way to replace the ACL, torn ACL, that, that method led to 30% gain. So actually, maybe we'd say 40% is not big, but then it's as good as the the patellar tendon regeneration. So we were pretty happy to see that. So we succeeded doing that. We know that there are things to improve. We, to convince a surgeon to, we know that working with them, uh, to convince a surgeon to apply this uh, technology to human <coughs> beings, we'd need a strong implant, a stronger scaffold, because surgeons like to graft something solid, right? <coughs> so. But nevertheless, uh, we will see about stronger, how to reinforce it. But the glycerol itself, which is amazingly, we don't know why, uh, seems to, to contribute to strengthen. So there are ways to strengthen. And I'll come back to it later. Um, we'd like also to find synthetic bone plugs. We would not, right now we use animal, you know, animal bones uh, sample, but it's not rejected because it's devoid of cells and sterilized and everything. But still, in human being, we need synthetic bone plugs to be safer. And that's it. And uh, in terms of nanotechnology, because, um, well, that's the purpose of the meeting here. Some people told me that in the future, some, you know, some biosensor could be integrated in graft, and particularly in ligaments. So I made just a, a little parenthesis. We, we aim at having also human recombinant collagen to, for human application eventually. We started um, looking into uh, what was the best strategy to have human collagen that could be used for uh, ACL regeneration in vivo. And uh, looking through it and looking through nanotechnology, we found that some people uh, start coating collagen, human collagen fibers uh, which they associate with the concept of nanowire, uh, coat them with gold or silver and um, uh, lead to an implantable electric sensors. Well, this is an example of a paper that was published <coughs> by Sato and Webster who, who work on nanophase materials as bone implants and uh, I guess uh, they are not the only ones. The concept that I saw there was collagen molecule uh, and bone crystal that are linked together to sort of make a big uh, structure and use it for bone, uh, well, bone repair. So collagen is a molecule that, that is interesting for various types of nanotechnology application. This is our network of fibers that, have, that were lyophilized and rehydrated. Um, and... Uh, this is the, the network of fibers after being dipped in glycerol 10%. And you see there that the fibers seem to be all glued together. Although all the cells can migrate into it, grow on it and in it, and synthesize, renew the, this matrix, we tested it in vitro. Um, synthesis of collagen, I'll pass that. I just say that we are trying to, to set up the method to synthesize our own human collagen in vitro. And uh, to do that, 
we, uh, you know that this polyhydroxylase enzyme is one of the key enzymes to make the triple helix. And so if you use, I'll go fast, if you use PBAC system, you can introduce the two subunits that code for this enzyme plus the two subunits of the collagen and these are the subunit, and, see, and, and use the SF9 insect cells to express the collagen. So I won't be long talking about details about this technology, which is available on the internet if you want to read about it, but the idea is to have um, viral selection and purification uh, using, I'll pass that because the time is flying so fast, I'm sorry. Uh, the cells are SF9, they are transfected with the virus that contains all the, the plasmid uh, with the, the various uh, insert collagen subunit and P4 hydroxylase subunit. When you see, when you check if there is expression of mRNAs for the collagen and the, the enzyme, you see that it's a positive. Um, the, the selection of the, of the clones that are positive, the viral juice is done that way. You, well, you put agarose overlay and you select where there are lysis plates, you know, area that are devoided of cells, you go pick it and then you can uh, freeze it and have it for years. It's a very stable system. So you grow your cells at large scale and you produce your collagen uh, when and where you want. Uh, actually, right now, we have reached one milligram per liter. I don't know, uh, you know, it's preliminary data, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, in bioengineering, we don't want collagen that doesn't polymerize in vitro. We need fibers. And so if the collagen that is synthesized through the system doesn't polymerize and, makes fi and make fibers, well, that's no use for us. And the first thing we tried to see if it would be making fibers. So it does but not to an extent that we, we really wish to get. So we'll have some setup to do to have better yield and better structures. But I think that we are on the way to get a good product that uh, could be used in, of course, tissue engineering, but maybe nanotechnology too. And uh, thank you to my team, but I would rather go and quickly thank uh, the co-chairs, Martin Roblat and Baruch Bromberg, who invited me here with uh, Mrs. Temple Forsen and Genesis Roblat, that I, I'm very touched that I was invited here. And I thank you, and I hope that uh, my speech was uh, understood, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.